Ethan and I were recently out on a regularly scheduled pond maintenance call together when we got to talking like we usually do. This trip, the question we were debating was this, which pond management techniques deliver the most bang for the buck when it comes to raising trophy class bass? Hey guys, Gary Lee here, fisheries biologist at Pond King. Today I want to share with you the outcome of a recent discussion I had with Ethan Stokes, one of the other fisheries biologists here at Pond King. We were trying to decide if we could identify the best, most cost-effective pond management strategies that we could recommend to everyone to help improve bass production. To get to that answer, we had to identify the criteria we'd use to qualify the techniques as best. We agreed we'd evaluate the various techniques based on cost, short and long-term management plans, and effectiveness. Meaning, how likely will that technique impact bass production across a large variety of bodies of water? That's an important qualifier because pond management plans are dramatically impacted by the size of the body of water, its profile, age, as well as the current population of aquatic species found in it. Using that criteria, here's where we landed. Regardless of your pond or lake's attributes, one of the simplest things you can do to impact your bass production is increase food production. This doesn't directly impact your bass themselves. It just improves the food source available to your bass. There are essentially two ways to increase food production, and which you choose will ultimately depend on your pond or lake size. If the fishery you're managing is less than two acres, you can increase your food supply through supplemental feedings specifically targeting the forage species, bluegill. The way this helps impact your bass production is that by feeding your bluegill, you will help more of them achieve a larger size, thereby creating a brood stock density. Ultimately, this will improve the recruitment of bluegill at each subsequent spawn, increasing the supply of food for your bass. We recommend that you go through about 60 or so pounds per month per acre. If the fishery you are managing is larger than two acres, then in addition to a feeding regime, fertilization is another cost-effective way to increase the food source for your bass. Fertilizing facilitates a bloom of phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are fundamentally important to your ecosystem because they are a source of primary productivity. This means they manufacture organic matter out of inorganic nutrients in the environment. In other words, phytoplankton are the very base of the food chain and supply energy throughout the ecosystem. By inducing a bloom of phytoplankton, you are supercharging your ecosystem with potential sources of energy, leading to the improved growth rates of all fishes. Depending on the manufacturer's specification, be sure and read the label for recommended application rates. The next technique may seem a little counterintuitive, but before you decide it isn't for you, hear me out. One of the most effective ways to increase bass production, especially if you're trying to produce trophy class bass, is through an annual harvest. And here's why. Every ecosystem has a carrying capacity, which represents the maximum number of individuals that ecosystem can support. When your pond reaches carrying capacity, resource availability for each fish is reduced, and each individual has to work harder to consume the resources it needs to grow, as a larger percentage of available resources are utilized by other members of the population. Individual members and the population at large will become stunted. To keep your pond below carrying capacity, the most effective thing you can do is an annual selective harvest. While you could hire professionals to conduct your harvest, like me and Ethan, you can also have an awful lot of fun doing it yourself. To make sure you're harvesting the correct size bass, download our free DIY pond management app and pick up a cull board and digital scale. Ensuring you have adequate cover for the fish in your pond is the other pond management technique on our list of top recommendations. Habitat or structure actually accomplishes two things. It offers cover for juvenile fish, which can contribute to achieving a population of brood stock forage fish. It also offers ambush opportunities for the bass, allowing them to be more efficient predators. Said another way, by providing ambush opportunities for the bass, they don't have to work as hard for each meal, which means they get fatter faster. One of the reasons adding structure to your fishery is so important is because here in Texas, the vast majority of ponds and lakes that we service are man-made. So without our help, these bodies of water are essentially devoid of any cover. We recommend ensuring that 10 to 15% of your pond or lake provides some type of cover and ideally satisfies the seasonal migration of fish throughout that body of water. 
Your options for adding cover to your pond include artificial habitat like we make here at Pond King or organic materials such as rock piles, aquatic vegetation, brush piles, and even Christmas trees. We do recommend that you stick away from materials that are going to add any toxins to that body of water such as tires or PVC pipe. So if you have limited resources but want to get the most out of your bass fishery, these are the three things you can do that will have a big impact on your bass production. Increase food production, reduce competition, and enhance cover. If you found this information helpful, be sure and use the button below to subscribe. And if there are other topics you'd like to learn about, leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all down at the pond.